what I realized was uh, the products also can affect your hormonal balance in the body. The new generation is very sensible and sensitive about the things that they use and what goes out and they discuss. This brand we have truly focused on knowing what our customer wants and delivering that. And don't you try this and why can't you do this to the customer? And I was like, yes, that's what we are thinking. And it was just amazing to hear, you know, all the insights from the children. And we expect a lot more from our children than we expect from ourselves. And there is a lot of science-backed research, which is out there, which once you know, it could give you like those aha moments. Welcome to Voice It with Karishma Shah. Hello and welcome to another episode of Voice It with Karishma. Today we have the lovely, the sweet Prasanna with us. She is the founder of a brand known as Tiki Tora. It is um, a brand which is made by love. It is a brand which she truly believes in. So I will hand it over to you. Prasanna, please tell us what is the uh, story behind the name and uh, please tell us something about your kid-friendly brand. <laughs> Thanks, Karishma. Very, very excited to be here. And um, the story, okay, I'll go in the same order that you asked. Yes. Uh, the story behind the name, we actually went through 500 names. And I'm not kidding, it's actual 500 names. And most of the names our uh, legal team were like striking it off because it was like sounding very close to some brand or this brand, that thing. And uh, one thing we were quite sure was that we wanted a coined name. We didn't want a name which had any meaning, nothing, so no baggage attached to it. Yeah. But at the same time, it had to be fun, youthful, and a little more... Um, I would say, which had a universal appeal, not had any cultural, you know, orientation or anything attached to it because we wanted everyone to enjoy it and relate to the brand. And uh, so in the end, we we short, uh, we shortlisted about seven names and then I went to the tar my target group, which is children between the ages 4 to 16. And, yeah. I, and so I asked those children so we were like, these are the names of, so we are planning to bring a brand for you. And uh, these are the names, which name appeals to you the most? And everybody chose Tiki Toro. <laughs> so, it, you know, so that's how Tiki Toro came to be. It's also chosen by the children for I whom this brand is meant to be. So, meant to so this, that is how, uh, this is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing it. It's just lovely. I love the whole process of how you did it. That's why I wanted everyone to know, you know, that yeah. how, how did you choose the name? So tell us about Tiki Toro. What is your, you know, what's your vision with it? And also, you know, um, I know the story behind why you started it. Please tell everybody the story behind it. So as uh, cliche as it might sound uh, of late with all the lot of D2C brands coming out, it did start with a personal need because my son who is now nine was then six when I was looking for uh, products for him because he had out grown the baby products because baby products are meant for the newborn skin for the delicate newborn skin and he was a six-year-old with two dogs at home rolling in the garden an outdoorsy boy and I had to either dump like half the product I mean I had to like give him two baths just to get him clean or yeah. you know, use a lot of products and then of course my son didn't want to use a baby product either because he was like I'm not a baby anymore and so I started asking other mothers what they were using and uh, I also experimented and explored like you know the safe adult products the safer brands which are out there or they claim to be safe and then I used those on my son and what I realized was his skin was not mature enough as an adult skin and it was drying and his, you know, he was too sensitive for the adult products. So I was desperately looking for products for this age group, which cleaned the kids enough. At the same time, we're safe. And when I started talking to other mothers, they were all looking for products. And everybody was like, no, if you know of a brand, you come and tell us. And uh, I had already started on my personal wellness journey. And, you know, I was known for my research and my uh, all that which I would do in products and ingredients. I was obsessed with the products I bought for myself because I had hormonal issues. And um, what I realized was 
uh, the products also can affect your hormonal balance in the body. So I wanted to make sure the products were safe. So as I was delving deeper and deeper, I found that uh, there were not many kid brands uh, for this catering to this age group, which were safe. Actually, I would say there were no kid brands which completely satisfied my need for my son, at least available here in our country. And that time it was COVID. So my supply chain, my personal supply chain from US got uh, <laughs> cut off because there was nobody going to you, you know, US or Europe or wherever it is where they do have some safe kid brands and nobody was coming from there and no courier, nothing happening. So I had to, I said, okay, why not be the solution when, and in fact, in June, 2020, I got COVID. I was completely isolated and I started making calls. Friends, friends of friends, acquaintances. If anyone had a child between this, these two ages, like four to 16, I was calling them. And um, from Salem, Bellari, Coimbatore, Mysore, um, you know, Bombay, Delhi, Kolkata, you name it. I have called people across the country and I asked the mothers and every single mother wanted a product for the children in this age group. And there were parents with teenagers or preteens who wanted products specifically for them. They said, um, you know, that, uh, you know, that sweat coming and body odor and acne, they wanted something for that age group as well. So that's why initially I thought I would buy, I would get something universal. And then we realized that, no, the needs of the children and the physiology is also very different. And the hair needs, the skin needs is very different as we started delving deep. So then that's how Tikitoro and Tikitoro Kids came to be. So we have some great formulators on board who understand the physiology of skin and hair and, you know, and so that's how we, it came to be. Lovely. This is, this is even more interesting than the name story. I feel like, and you know, it shows actually Prasanna because I've seen the, I've seen your packaging. I've seen the products. I've used the products just to kind of like, you know, have a feel of, you know, what you really put into it. Um, there are a couple of things that I noticed and I'm going to bring that up to be able to ask you about it also because I found it very interesting. But I feel like, you know, all this research that you've done, all this uh, background work that you've done before you actually launched into a brand, it really shows in your product. It really does show in the work that you're putting up. Um, I noticed that the products have a lot of natural ingredients. There is um, sea buckthorn, there is rice, there is, um, you know, a lot of fruit derivatives. There are a lot of, um, you know, these natural antioxidants that are there, right? Um, I did realize that all the products have so many nice things. And it really is the need of the hour because, you know, we are seeing these uh, harmful chemicals and preservatives and emulsifiers and parabens and um, you know things which are in the products that even we use like even the adults are using and imagine if it's if it's so harsh on the adults I'm really really sure how how difficult would it be on sensitive skin right which the children have and you were right about the hormonal aspects especially with women every product that you use which has a lot of chemicals inside they have a very negative impact on our hormones. It's considered toxins, right? True. So I'm so happy that you were doing this beautiful work with your brand. I love the products. I love the brand. I want to ask you, um, what was your thought about using, you know, all these different products, like different, different ingredients for your products, right? You have a wide variety, even for the teens and even for the younger kids, right? Tell us what the philosophy was behind using all these natural ingredients. So every single ingredient which has gone into the product was meant to go into the product. Let me put it that way. It was chosen for a particular reason and for the action that they do. Um, for example, um, you know, for the uh, teenage skin, if you see, um, that's when the preteens and then the pre-puberty and all that, you have... Um, uh, you know, there's sweat coming up, the body odor coming up, the acne starts to, um, you know, show and like sl small breakouts and everything. So if you see in our face wash, uh, face wash, we have used neem, we have used aloe vera, we have used moringa. So they have that, you know, it it is more purifying, it is cleansing at the same time, it's nurturing. And for the hair, we have rice protein. 
and all that go in, which is like, you know, really nurturing and nourishing the hair. So every single actor which has gone in has an action that it needs to do. It has its work that it needs to do. And that's how we chose for the body what is required because for say four to 10, they don't need like a problem solver, like a teenager, because, you know, the excessive sweat is not there or body odor doesn't start by that age, like, you know, five, six, seven, eight. And, but they need something which cleans them, which uh, effectively at the same time, which is safe and at the same, and it should also nurture their skin. So the actors, which we have chosen for them does those things. And the actors, which we have chosen for the teens does you know, whatever their skin physiology or hair physiology needs. Yeah. And that's how every single ingredient which has gone in is specifically chosen for its action. And so that's why everything is like filled with goodness. So you might see some common ingredients, but many of the actives are different for different age groups. Yes, 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 I did notice that. And I think that's yeah. great for people to kind of have a specific need-based product. And yes. also, I know that, you know, you've asked so many parents, you've done your research with the parents, you have these uh, insights from all the parents, and you're a parent as well, I also know that. So please tell us a few things that, you know, it. I mean, along with skincare, um, tell us some of the things that, you know, you've kind of like learned in the journey about, you know, just anecdotes about parenting or nothing right or wrong, but, you know, just your perspective about it. It's nice for, it's nice for parents to hear this from other parents. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, one more thing I just wanted to add before I delve into that as a parent uh, in the journey is because here I do have a focus group of very discerning mothers yeah. and children. So every single product of ours, we send it like once it's been formulated and tested for safety, we send it to the mothers. They try it. The kids, I have some phenomenal, I mean, such adorable voice mess, voice notes and messages from kids saying, oh, Prasanna auntie, I like this aspect, but then this is not thing and this is the thing. <laughs> it is so adorable. So every single, you know, product is being tested by them and they approve it. And only after they approve, it goes into, um, you know, the formulation, the final formulation. We approve only if once my focus group approved. So every single formulation goes through at least 10 to 15 iterations. Yes. And so that is how, and then we have some which have gone to like 25, 30 because there is like one aspect which, you know, which didn't, especially my moisturizer, it had to be moisturizing, but fast absorbing and non-sticky. So when I apply and when I do this, it has to go in because otherwise <laughs> uh, that was my son, he would go and roll on the bed and, but my bed would be full of moisturizer. So we, we do that. So what was interesting is to interact with the children. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, from the, as a brand owner or a, as a, you know, as a founder, for me to interact, get the insights from children, get insights from them, that was very interesting. And when you actually sit and listen to them, they have, they have a lot more to say. Yes. which makes sense and you'll be like wow I didn't think of that or I can't believe you think like that in this age group so you know it was it is very very interesting to come across children and their insights and what they are looking for in a product and what excites them and then there are uh, you know so so that that was very interesting and great learning because some kids are they were very um, sensitive about, I mean, uh, sensible about the, sensitive about the environment and sustainability. So they started asking me about my packaging. What do I do and how do I do it? And what is the thing? How is it recycled? What is our program there? So I had to tell them that whatever we, you know, uh, put out and all the plastics that we use also is not the, you know, the leachable. So it is like HDP and not the leachable plastics and everything is 100% recyclable. So even the uh, the outside carton, if you see it has no plastic in it, so the carton itself can be recycled. So all those things, when the kids came and asked us, we were like, okay, we'll, we'll make sure that, you know, even this, so the new generation is very um, sensible and sensi sensible and sensitive about the things that, they use and what goes out and they discard. So 
we try we have brought that into the brand ethos as well and uh, we've also tied up with someone uh, you know to whatever plastic which goes out and all the plastic that goes out from our brand is 100% recyclable and they are called high value plastics but then you have a lot of plastics which are in the environment which are single use plastics which don't get recycled so we have tied up with a company to recycle those single use plastics which otherwise end up in the garbage dump and everything yeah. and uh, so the amount of plastic which we send out and the amount of plastic we take out so we kind of neutralize it and the plastic we send out is anyway 100% recycled because only those are high value plastics so that way we we are trying to become plastic positive so all these conversations i've had with children i've had with children um, on um, you know on even my logistics issue so there was a child and we were like talking and then I had to say, oh, then this delivery didn't happen. And they were like, oh, but why don't you try this? And why can't you do this to the customer? And I was like, yes, that's what we were thinking. And it was just amazing to hear, you know, all the insights from the children and what they like and, you know, their knowledge, everything. And apart from that, as a mother, I, I, I'm also a certified parent educator. So before I started my entrepreneurial journey i um i got certified as a parent educator i used to work with an ngo we used to conduct programs on parenting uh, with connection and um, and we used to have a lot of workshops i've written articles on parenting so that way i have i think i've always had it you know being an advocate for the children yeah. and um, so that's how with even with Tikitoro, it's become something which I'm doing for children. So that's uh, that's something which is close to my heart and I'm very passionate about. Yes. That's a yeah. nice insight. I didn't know. I'm really happy that I got to know that right now. You know, you didn't tell me this before, but I'm really <laughs> happy that you said that, you know, you're also you were also doing something like this before. And yes. um, it's it's really nice because you know what you just said right now. And that focus group of yours is really making you focus. <laughs> <laughs> completely it is amazing even the names they come up with the color the packaging so if you notice my packaging whatever the you know we have like this watercolor effect and everything and uh, I, I've taken it to the children even the shape of our bottle yeah we have I, we because this is not like a stock bottle we have the mold we, we created the shapes so it's a simple one and I had like few designs 3d designs and I gave it to the children and they held the bottle and they said, okay, this is easier to hold and we like this shape and this is the thing. So this brand, we have truly focused on knowing what our customer wants and delivering that. And we have them giving us real-time feedback. Yes, no wonder, which is why I told you, you know, when I started, I told you that it really shows. And now that you're yeah. giving me all this, you know, beautiful insight, it makes yeah. sense why it really shows. Because you've actually gone out there and just kind of, you know, listen to what they want and right. this is something that so many people make a mistake about you know like it could be branding it could be introducing a product service anything right they come in with their ego and they're like listen you know what I have this product and I want to make it like big right but yeah. um, they don't want to listen to anybody they don't want to listen to what the consumer wants or yeah. what are they really providing and then you're there now and, you know, you've gone ahead and actually listened and helped out with whatever it is that they need instead of just coming from your own ego, right? And that's why this is this has been so beautiful for you and it shows in the services, it shows in the products and it shows in the kind of, you know, momentum that you're gaining with the brand also. So I feel like it's lovely to see, you know, people like you come in here and, and you were right about that gap. There is truly a gap of, you know, made in India products that are catering to specific needs and that are also sustainable. They are also recyclable. They are also listening to the target audience and also very, very natural, effective, you know, rather than slathering ourselves with lots of um, commercial and large scale industry products. 
I think it's 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 fantastic. I I've already told you this before. I'm going to repeat it, but I love the work that you're doing, Prasanna. Um, I want to wish you more, more, more power for the brand and for also. And on the on that note, please tell me about the question that I asked you. Um, the parenting thing that you've done. You were guiding people before, and you know now through Vicky Toro also you're doing this with with kids yes. for parents. So yes. you know, tell me one thing that you've noticed. Um, what's one um. What's one problem area that you've noticed where parents tend to ignore that aspect uh, for the kids? See, first of all, I would say every single parent is doing the best they can. Yes. Um, which is something which we realized even as a parent educator. And that is the notion we even approach the parents because nobody wants, everybody wants the best for their children. Yeah. And everybody comes from a place of whatever knowledge that they have. And with that knowledge, they want the best for the child and they do, they act accordingly. Yes. And um, so whatever is the current need for the child, which a parent ignores, um, I wouldn't put it that way. But there is some things what I can say, which not all parents know is that there is a lot of science-backed research which is out there which once you know it could give you like those aha moments for your for the time that they have with their children yes uh, because at every age every stage because um uh, you know there is a reason behind why children act the way they do yes. when people troublesome terrible twos and troublesome threes and all that yeah. it is not that the children are terrible at twos and threes and then there is four five six at every age there is some um, <laughs> adjective attached to it and I don't know it all I knew all this but there is a reason for that for example a two-year-old might be able to converse very beautifully and it means you know it you it they might come across as if like you know, they understand everything that's happening to them, but then the parents should understand. So what happens is when they are able to talk well and talk back or, you know, comprehend and share, I'm not even talking about two, even three and four and five, whatever that age group might be as the age progresses. But what we need to understand is that brain is not fully developed. And there are actually, to make it simple, there are like say three parts of the brain, the primal brain, which is fully developed as childhood. There is that emotional brain, which is developing a lot faster when you're twos and threes. That's why the kids are very emotional. Yes. And the executive brain, which is that, you know, higher brain that you might call it or prefrontal cortex, that gets starts developing at a later, slower pace and it develops a little later. Yes. So what happens is, um, Though the child might come across as they are, you know, speaking so well and they are understanding that cognition is very good, but they operate mostly from their middle brain. So when give them when they say, no, I want it from this cup, a yellow cup or a blue cup, and you give them a green cup and it, it is of the same shape, they wouldn't understand. And what they would want one day, they might not want the other day. And it is all that, you know, it is their brain development. So once... I would say if the parents understand the science behind the child's brain development, yes. every age you might it might make it that much easier. I wouldn't say it will like completely solve your issues. No, it yes. might be easier for you to understand the child more. And at nine, ten, the children become a lot more independent. They would start moving towards their peer group. They will start asserting their independence, and we might come across as oh my God, that kid start, is starting to show attitude. He's disrespectful. No, they are not disrespectful. It is yes. that brain development which is triggering them. You do, you can set limits with empathy. You can have the conversation. So I would say understanding more the science behind the, you know, the child's development, the brain development helps the parent. Another aspect which I would say is we expect a lot more from our children than we expect from ourselves in the terms of the maturity, emotional understanding. We expect a child to understand the moment we say no, the yeah. moment we set down a limit. 
Whereas if we were in their shoes and if another adult is going to come and tell that to us, we will be a lot more emotional. So we expect a lot more emotional maturity from our children than we have that. So yes. children learn from us. And the more we show them that how to, um, you know, even take a break. Like there are times where I've told my son, like, you know what, I'm getting so angry that if, I'm, if I talk to you right now, I'm going to yell. So I'm going to take a moment to calm myself down and come and talk to you. Yes. And I, I do that and come. So that's how, our, you know, the emotional regulation also, we have to show that to our children. And of course, there are times where I have shouted at my son. and But then I have also shown him that after that, I've gone and apologized to him. And we yes. have discussed, I've told him like what I did was wrong and this is where I came from and that is not a thing. And so the more we are able to show our children and, um, you know, be a role model to our children, whether it comes from emotional regulation, whether it is apology or something, I think that's where as parents, we have to be a little more uh, aware of our actions. Yeah. And it is it is again a long term journey so it's nothing like once you do something wrong and you're scarring your child for life no you can always go and repair the damage so i yes. so coming back to that it's every parent does their best but some things if we are a little more aware of it will just ease our journey and in parenting yes not only are you doing a fab job with tiki toro i feel like you're a fab 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 educator for parenting as well because what you just said right now is is so important and I'm so glad that you said this because parents sometimes are so caught up in raising the child and fulfilling responsibilities and um, listening to probably elders in the house and following a set of rules and regulations that they forget that there is a mechanism, there is science, there is a logical way of sometimes doing certain things. And if that is followed, it's going to not only be emotionally healthy for the child, but it's also going to be very emotionally healthy for the parent itself, right? So thank you for throwing light on that, Prasanna. I thought that was beautiful. And the more people know that, um, they should actually approach you as much as possible to be able to get educated about, you know, if they're facing any kind of parenting issues. I think it was fab. I've loved having this conversation with you, Prasanna. Thank you so much for, you know, telling us about Tiki Toro. Um, before we go, please tell us what's the vision with um, with the brand moving forward. Do you have any um, immediate plans or do you have any long-term plans of, you know, your vision for the brand? So um, we are looking at, of course, one thing is expanding our product portfolio. And this again came from the parents, from the children, their needs. So we have about 24 products in our pipeline and various stages of development, which we'll be launching in this coming year. And we are also looking at international markets. We've already applied for trademark and we've bought them in many of the countries and we are looking at global expansion as well. And uh, in select maybe retail locations in India, you will see us too. Yes, yes. <laughs> <I'm looking. laughs> it should be many. It should reach as many houses as possible because it's a beautiful product, very effective. And also I feel like the founder behind it is uh, is an epitome or is an example or a role model of, you know, how much effort it takes into it's our products, our things that we put out in the world are almost like babies, you know, and it, it takes that much effort. So if you've nourished your brand so well from the conception stage, I'm sure that, you know, moving forward, it's going to grow up to be a very um, effective child. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Because end of the day, every the product that I make is something I use for my own son. Yeah. So if I'm going to be obsessed about having endocrine disruptor free products, as safe products, efficacious products, because that's because yes. I'm using it for my own son. So that, that is all. So. If I can use the product for myself, I mean, for my own son, I'm I'm very confident about presenting it to the world too. So that yes. is... And also, Prasanna, I feel like, you know, um, moving ahead, right, in the times to come, you know, you've, you've mentioned today that, you know, your focus group being those lovely kids, right? And they're so aware, they're so conscious. We're moving towards times and we're moving towards an era now where 
everyone, the new generation that's going to come in is going to be way more sensitive, way more aware, and a lot, lot, lot more conscious about so many things. They're going to really make that effort, right, to do things. So all the consumer products moving ahead, FMCG, body products, or, you know, anything basically, which is under the consumer bracket, right, they all will have to have regulations. They all will have to fall under a certain umbrella, which is safe, effective, not causing any disruptions of any kind. And you're already halfway through it. So, you know, kudos to you for that. But but yes, it is the future and you're already there. Um, you're already there doing all this great work with the brand. And even the products, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm glad you're also thinking about expanding the product range being available at retail stores because we need more natural disruptor free products we need more brands like tiki toro so thank you so much for this conversation and i'm really really happy that i got to host you today i'm really happy that i got to learn so much from you also today i hope you had a good time today i i had a lot of fun thank you thank you so much for having me over it was wonderful to chat with you you know share thank, thank you prasanna thanks um sofia we can close now